Good afternoon and welcome. I am Russell Evasion and I serve as an assistant director in Residence Life. I have the great privilege of being your moderator for this afternoon. As a Loyola alum, I am personally excited to be able for you to experience our beautiful campus and welcome you to your new Loyola home. We have more than 400 people registered for today's event and we are very grateful for your interest and for your participation. Today, we will hear from leaders in residence life and dining about their hopes for the spring semester. Those topics will include assignments and move-in process, the move-in quarantine, student engagement, the role of the COVID care coordinators, and our dining and meal plans. In a moment, I will introduce our panelists for today's webinar. After all the speakers have presented, there will be a brief question and answer period that I will moderate. Questions have been gleaned from those that you have sent in and those that you've asked this afternoon. Should you be interested in asking a question, please feel free to use the Q&A feature located conveniently at the bottom of your screen. We have an expert staff working behind the scenes to help you and answer all the questions you may have. We expect that this webinar will end around 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. This event is being recorded and will be posted to the Return to Campus website later this week. And without further ado, please join me in welcoming our panel members. Claire McDonald, Assistant Director for Residence Life in Assignments Marketing and Communication. Jennifer O'Brien, Associate Director of Residence Life for Operations. Deb Schmidt Rogers, Assistant Vice President and Director of Residence Life. Yesenia Garcia, Resident Director. Matt Gallagher, COVID Care Coordinator and Contact Tracing Lead. Connie Chambers, District Manager for Aramark and Sophia Bamiatis, District Marketing Manager for Aramark. We hope you find this afternoon helpful and informative. Now it is my distinct pleasure to turn it over to Jane Newfeld, our Vice President for Student Development for a brief word of welcome. Take it away, Jane. Thank you, Russell. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Division of Student Development, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for joining us today. We are thrilled to be able to welcome students back into campus this spring. Residence Life has been working really hard to provide a safe living environment for you, one in which we hope that you will thrive academically and socially. In order to do that, we need to rely on each other to follow our COVID uh, guidelines and remind ourselves that our actions have an impact in the community in which we live. It's important that as persons for others, we support the student promise, care for self, care for others, and care for the community. So thank you again for joining us today. I look forward to meeting you. Thank you so much, Jane. I would now like to first welcome Claire McDonald, followed by Jennifer O'Brien to the webinar, who will talk about the assignments and the move-in process for our, residents, for our residential students. Thanks, Russell. I wanna to start today by saying how excited I am to welcome everyone back to campus for the spring semester. I'm really looking forward to seeing you all in January. Uh, so today I'm just going to briefly go over the housing assignment information. Most of you already received this information in your email on December 4th, so a lot of this will just be a quick review. Um, as I said, the first assignment emails did go out on December 4th to your Loyola email account. If you did not receive that email yet, you may have applied a little later in our, pro excuse me, in our process, and we will um, assign you as soon as we are able and send you that email shortly. If you're still looking for that message and you think you should have it, give our office an email and we're happy to look that up for you anytime. We are still processing housing assignments. So if you do have a friend who thinks they may want to live on campus, please feel free to let them know that they can still apply for on-campus housing. We'd be happy to welcome you in January. Uh, so students were all assigned to really just two room types this year. We have apartment style singles or suite style singles. Apartment style singles are full apartments with private kitchens and bath all contained within the unit. And suite style singles are single individual rooms with either a private attached bathroom or a semi-private bathroom that's shared with no more than one other student. If you're in a semi-private suite with a shared bathroom, you can find your suite mate information in the Residence Life portal in Locus. Uh, so if you haven't gotten in touch with that person yet, you may want to now, just to make sure you are all um, excited to welcome each other and, and enjoy your shared space for uh, the spring semester. We did go ahead and include information in your assignment email about how your room used to be set. 
we will not put more than one student in the space during the spring semester. So you're not going to get a surprise roommate at any point. Uh, but this, we did want to include this information so you can plan for how much furniture will be in your room. Um, so if your room was a bedroom double, you know you have a one bedroom apartment with two sets of furniture in it. Um, but again, you will be in that space by yourself. We were able to accommodate all mutual neighbor requests. So if you requested a neighbor, uh, that person should be close to you um, on your floor uh, so that you can kind of have a familiar face uh, of friends that you know will be living nearby you. Uh, if you have questions about your room assignment, we'd be happy to answer them. Just send us an email anytime and we'll ha be happy to, to help you out. We cannot necessarily get into the specifics about your particular room. So what is the square footage of room 1234 in Bellarmine? That's not something we can help you with, but we can help you with um, how much furniture would be in your space or um, would there be a, a microwave or not, things like that. We can definitely assist you with those. Just send us an email with your question anytime. All housing and meal plan charges should have been on your December 15th e-bill. So if you're looking for your housing charges or how you pay for housing and meal plan, that's all on your e-bill. You can take a look at that there. If you do not see housing and meal plan charges on there, it's most likely because you're not yet registered for classes. So once you're registered for classes, then we'll be able to assign you to your housing and meal plan charges. If you have questions, again, I say this all the time, just send us an email and we'll be happy to, to help you out. Finally, your uh, assignment email included information about your move-in date and time. So that's a very important piece of information. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jennifer O'Brien so she can discuss why that's so important as she goes over our move-in process in great detail. Thank you so much, Claire. As Claire said, I'm Jennifer O'Brien, the Associate Director for Housing Operations. And I'm so excited to um, be welcoming you all to campus in January. And as we begin to prepare for the process of move-in, um, we need your help. We need your help to ensure a smooth process and a safe process for everyone. Um, the first thing I'm gonna recommend, and you, you probably noted this in your assignments letter, is that we're strongly recommending packing light. I know that this may seem um, a challenge. Uh, we in fact sent you the um, dimensions of our typical moving cart. Uh, this is really for an, a couple of reasons. One, we want to make sure that the process of getting you into your residence hall building is quick and efficient. Everything that we're doing really has social distancing at the heart of the process, both for the safety of, of you, our community, our students, and your, your family or friends who are coming to help you uh, move in, but also for our staff. So the quicker we can get you into your building, the better, and one cart helps us do that. We also want to make sure that you have flexibility in mind. Um, that's going to be, I think, the theme um, of this webinar, flexibility. Um, if plans change, we want you to be able to um, move quickly, um, and one cart allows for that. Um, also, important to pack patience. Um, everything about this process is probably going to be different than either what you've experienced in the past if you're a returning student or different from what you expected if you're a first year student. Um, this is move-in in January. There are going to be elements of, of this move-in process that are potentially outside of all of our control. What the weather decides to do, what the traffic is like, and what the lines are like once you get here on campus. So patience um, is appreciated. Um, as Claire alluded to, you received a very specific move-in date and time in your assignments letter. That assigned time um, is to really help with two things. One, resources. We want to make sure that we're ready for you, that we have the appropriate number of staff available to help you, um, whether that's helping you with uh, your keys, your welcome packet, getting your car unloaded, getting a cart, um, or uh, really also helping you um, ensure social distancing and safety. All of our times, uh, our time frames really account for um, minimizing the number of people entering a particular building at any given time. All of the move-in appointments allow for a spread of students across campus, so we're not necessarily moving in, you know, everybody in one building at one time, and again, uh, for purposes of safety. So please, we do ask, ask for you to honor um, that date and that assigned time. 
Um, when you arrive to campus, uh, you will see a lot of uh, beautiful new signage reminding you about wearing your mask, about social distancing. And it's very important that as you leave your vehicle to begin the process of checking in, of unloading, um, you're gonna be coming into contact with staff probably pretty quickly after you get out of your car. So remember, to have that mask on and be prepared for those those uh, socially distant interactions, but um, ensuring that you're wearing your mask both outside and inside. Um, once you, of course, get to the comfort of your room, um, you know you can remove your mask, but be conscious of that as you're moving throughout the campus community. Um, your move-in process, as noted in your letter, begins when you arrive to the main parking structure on campus. If you're unfamiliar with the location of the parking structure, you can refer to the campus map. The main parking structure is P1 on your map. Um, you'll also note at P1, the parking structure, that there is a welcome center located on the first floor ground level on the south end of the parking garage. That's where residence life and division of student development staff will be to greet you and to uh, distribute keys, your welcome packets, and also to um, provide you access to your residence halls. You access your res hall using your Loyola student ID. Um, we are able to, once you arrive, program that card to open the front door and open inner doors of your building. So it's very important for you to locate your card. For many of you, these were mailed home over the summer as we were preparing for what we thought was going to be an in-person and residential fall. Um, for those of you who may be deferred or who are new, um, you may still need to get your ID. Um, or if you're a returning student and you've lost your ID, um, you will have to make a trip to the campus card office once you arrive on campus. Campus card is located in the Sullivan Center. Um, they, are they will be staffed and ready for um, any students who maybe still need to get their IDs upon arrival to campus. That should be one of the first stops after checking in. Another stop that you're going to want to make um, once you've checked in is for students who are going to be in apartment style housing. Apartment style housing, again, as Claire alluded to, has a full private kitchen. Uh, students who are in those style units will be provided a meal kit for their 14, 14 day quarantine period. Those meal kits can be picked up in Damon Student Center on the south end of the building, which is adjacent to the main parking structure. For students in suite style housing, you'll have meal, de meal delivery, but the quarantine meals for the apartment style and suite style will be talked about by my colleagues later in the webinar. But just from an order of operations perspective, I wanted you to plan for, if you're in apartment style housing, to pick up your meal kit uh, at the time of check-in. Um, one other thing of note is that we are asking that you only bring one helper to help you move into your residence hall. Um, I know that this is probably a challenging ask as this may put you in a position to choose either a friend or one parent to help you move in. But again, all that we are really focusing on with this move in process is social distancing, safety, ensuring that we don't have too many people in a building at any given time. Um, and so while that may be a hard ask, we really do need you to make that decision. As a part of the move-in welcome packet, you will be receiving one guest wristband that your guest will wear and have to show um, as, they, as they come into the building. Um, we want that to also be the same person for the whole time. Um, so please keep that in mind as you, as you plan. Um, the other piece I'll, I'll recommend is we all have a tendency to want to be so polite in our community and hold doors for each other and hold elevators open. Um, this is one time I'm going to give you permission to not do that with the elevator. Um, from a social distancing perspective, we'd really prefer that one family group or one student and their helper and their cart goes up in the elevator at one given time. It's a small space, again, to promote social distancing. Um, Claire talked a little bit about arrival to your room, the number of sets of furniture. You will, in most instances, unless you're in a true single, have extra furniture. We can't remove the extra furniture, so we ask that you make creative use for storage, 
use an extra bed as a couch, whatever, whatever makes sense um, and makes you comfortable. Um, we also will, uh, I should note that uh, we had our student furniture crew go through spaces in the late summer to ready rooms. Um, and so we confirmed uh, configurations of, of furniture and working set. So everything should be ready for your arrival. But if you do um, note that there is something in your unit that needs to be work ordered through facilities, there will be instructions in your check-in packet on how to do that. But really important to note, because of the 14-day move-in quarantine, we are going to hold on doing any non-urgent work orders until after the quarantine period is up. Facilities will, of course, address anything that is um, urgent or emergent. So, um, you know, think clogged toilet or um, your power has gone out in your room for some reason or, um, you know, those, those sorts of, of things that are really going to impact your comfort and safety in your room. If you do have an urgent issue that needs to be addressed in your room and facilities comes to your room, or if residence life has to come to your room for an urgent issue, we just remind you that while you're um, interacting with those individuals in your space to again, wear your mask. All of that said, I know that's a lot and it's different than maybe what you've experienced in the past or what you um, are looking or what you were maybe expecting. But again, we're doing this for your safety and your comfort. And over, overall, more than anything, we're excited to welcome you back to campus and we look forward to seeing you in January. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claire and Jennifer. I think that's always a good reminder to always have your mask with you and your Loyola ID. They are the keys to get you in and around campus and the most important thing that you'll need. I'd now like to introduce the Director of Residence Life, Deb Schmidt-Rogers, to talk to you all about our move-in quarantine process. Thanks so much, Russell. I know you've heard this more than once already on this webinar, but we really can't wait for you to get on campus. The quiet of campus is not why we decided to work for Residence Life. We really enjoy the energy of learning, of engagement, of diversity, and really just of all the students that we have on campus. Both the CDC um, and the Chicago Department of Public Health still strongly recommend the 14-day uh, quarantine for congregate living settings, and residence halls do identify as congregate living. So even though the CDC has provided two alternatives to that 14-day quarantine, um, the university has decided that we are going to maintain that 14-day quarantine. We are, however, keenly aware that just yesterday, the Chicago Travel Advisory was updated to reduce the number of quarantine days for those traveling from red and orange states from 14 days to 10 days. All of our planning to date has been predicated on the 14-day move-in quarantine. Should Loyola, as a university, make a decision to move or um, shorten the length of time for the move-in quarantine, please be aware that your meals will continue to be delivered or included in your meal kit for the full 14 days. Our food service provider has already placed those orders to really ensure that there were no supply chain issues over the holiday period. Loyola also does not intend to monitor the states from which family members or friends, your helper person, um, are traveling to assist you with move-in. So we hope and we encourage all family members to make safe decisions for your student and for the Loyola community. That includes wearing your mask, um, being a distance of six feet from people, washing your hands, and leaving campus as quickly as possible. If you have been exposed or are feeling ill, please do not come to campus. We do believe that between attending classes and other virtual opportunities that you will be able to stay active and make new friends. You received an email from Loyola yesterday about the decision that the majority of classes, even those that were intended to be in person on campus, will be virtual for the two, first two weeks of the term, which really makes your experience as a resident student exactly like those who are living off campus or commuting from living in California. You can leave your room 
during a moving quarantine to pick up your meals. If you are living in suite style or rooms without kitchens, so that would be Francis Hall, Regis Hall, Simpson Hall, your meals will be delivered to the lobbies twice a day and you can leave your room to get those deliveries. Your mailing address is not your building address. It is 6317 North Broadway, as you probably know from your move-in assignment letter. And so package deliveries like your Amazon orders um, or orders sent from home, boxes sent from home will always go there. Food deliveries can come to the residence hall front door, but remember that you will need to meet the delivery person. For those of you in an apartment with a kitchen, be sure to pick up your meal kit on your move-in day before your quarantine begins at the south end of the Damon Student Center. You will need to bring your own kitchen items if you intend to cook as the university does not provide um, plates, silverware, pots, pans, cookie sheets if you feel like baking me cookies. You may only leave your building for your mandatory twice weekly COVID testing. It's really important that you create your profile when you get the email from the SHIELD testing people, and then you can schedule your appointments. You may also leave your room to do your laundry, to take out your trash or your recycling to the appropriate location on your floor or in your building. We do encourage you to do your laundry liberally. We want to make sure that you always have 10 to 14 days worth of clean clothes so that should you be moved from a move-in quarantine to an exposure quarantine or an isolation that you, where you can't leave your room, that you will have enough clean clothes. You can wave at your neighbors um, or perhaps leave your door open to greet folks as they walk by, but remember that you cannot have a visitor in your room until move-in quarantine is over. No one, including Loyola students, will be permitted to be signed into the residence hall as a guest for 30 days after the start of the year, um, after which we will review guidance and we will look at COVID numbers and communicate a decision if there is a decision to change that. But once move-in quarantine is over, you may have one other student who lives in your current residence hall or apartment building in your room. We encourage you to stay masked and distant while visiting. So as Jen said, the moral of the story is adaptability and flexibility. One of the things that Residence Life has keenly learned over the last nine months is that all our planning cannot keep up with the virus as we learn more and cases shift up or down and different decisions need to be made and we need to pivot quickly. We acknowledge that some of you may find this incredibly difficult and we encourage you to reach out to the very many offices at Loyola that are prepared to support you should you find yourself struggling. We want this semester to be successful and we believe that we have a solid plan in place to partner with you to make that happen. Yesenia Garcia, one of our live-in resident directors will walk you through our engagement plan. Thank you so much, I cannot wait to meet you. All righty. Uh, once again, we cannot wait for uh, students to be back on campus. I know the quiet here uh, really disturbs me. So uh, we want to be mindful to keep all students, faculty and staff safe in accordance with uh, the Chicago Department uh, of Public Health and CDC regulations. Now we know that along with move in quarantine, um, you still need to make friends. You still need to meet your RA. You still need to feel like Loyola is home. So in lieu of our residential curriculum, which usually uh, teaches you a few life skills and how to get around Chicago, um, we are grounding our work in, into a new programming model cent centered around sense of belonging. Um, so during your move-in quarantine specifically, that's what everybody's kind of the most curious about, uh, we're going to have an immediate community meeting with your RA via Zoom. Um, they're going to review resources and expectations about what this these 14 days will look like. Um, they move on before you all, so they actually will be able to give you some tips and tricks that help them throughout the process. Um, they'll have a formal program where they'll mix and match you with other residents, um, and you'll be able to connect, right? Um, afterwards, they'll immediately email you with reminders, any links that might be necessary for you. Um, they'll provide you a menu of options to connect through programs. That also includes um, a lovely opportunity to engage with Sister Jean. 
Um, if you don't know who she is, she's a celebrity, international celebrity. Um, so please engage uh, if you do partake um, with virtual room blessings and stuff like that, Sister Jean will be kind of kicking off some of our programs along with our, our, our RAs. Um, during, that, uh, during that kind of first day, we do encourage you to exchange um, some meeting ID numbers with folks. If you feel comfortable, you'll be put into a group me with other people in your building or on your floor. So you all can check in and support one another throughout the move in quarantine process. Um, and then of course, after that, you'll be reached out to by your resident assistant. They will do a digital checkpoint with you. That'll be a one-on-one -on -one meeting scheduled between you two to check in on your mental health, on what you're doing to stay active, on what you're doing um, to pass the time, how you're doing in classes, what types of resources you might need that are personalized to your needs. The next nine to 10 weeks, we will take them in three week chunks, um, thinking about the long weekends built into our semester system. So we will, uh, our RAs will be providing virtual programs. Some of them are gonna be real time. Some of them um, that'll be like, you'll do an activity, a movie watch party um, and some passive opportunities. So they'll show you that they are thinking about you by leaving like candy hanging from your door or something, uh, maybe bingo nights where um, digital scavenger hunts, TikTok challenges, all of these things, the RAs are already on top of it. Um, and then of course, always, connect, always connecting you with Campus Recreation, Saga, Student Diversity and Multicultural Affairs, Athletics, the Wellness Center, Campus Ministry. So even though I like to brag that our RAs are the best at everything that uh, they touch, um, there are multiple ways to engage on this campus community. So on January 10th, mark your calendars. Um, Loyola will have another university webinar on the student experience. So outside of the RAs, what else is there for your students or yourself to engage in? Um, I like to remind everybody that engagement, as it is every year, is a two-way street. Um, so if you are concerned about the level of engagement, make sure that you are consistently looking at your email, at group me's, starting to connect, reach out to your RA if you're not seeing the type of programming that you'd like. Because again, if we're not meeting those needs, just let us know or uh, hit reply to those emails because I can guarantee you they're doing their job. Um, so be, please be responsive um, and open to new experiences. And if you have any specific needs, again, RRAs are natural overachievers. So I'm sure they're gonna blow you away. Thank you so much, Yesenia. I have to echo working with the RAs over the last few weeks and getting them ready and engaged to work with you all. I'm so excited and so are they to reach out, get to know you and help engage in this new virtual environment. As we continue to navigate through the webinar, don't hesitate to um, use our Q&A function. Shout out to our Q&A answer folks who have answered almost 80 questions so far. So really, we are, we are looking to answer your questions and, and get as much information to you as possible. Um, but now I would like to welcome Matt Gallagher, who's a member of our amazing COVID care coordinator team. And I want him to talk to you about what to expect in terms of COVID testing, as well as support for the residential students. Take it away, Matt. Thanks, Russell. Um, like Russell said, my name is Matt Gallagher and I am a COVID-19 care coordinator and also a contact tracing lead through the Wellness Center. Um, everybody has talked about how excited they are um, for everybody, everybody to be back on campus. And the reason we're so excited is because we have plans to make sure that the community that we create on campus is being safe. Um, and we have plans to take care of everybody um, as it relates to COVID and quarantine and isolation needs. So our role as a, co a COVID care coordinator um, was created specifically to care for students in the residence halls um, when someone tests positive for COVID or someone is exposed to COVID um, and then needs to go into quarantine and isolation. And so I wanted to give a brief overview about what happens when um, positive cases are reported and we are made aware of students um, who've tested positive or um, who are contacts of positive cases. So as everybody knows, there's going to be a much larger um, testing initiative happening on campus next semester. Um, and every day, me and my colleagues who serve um, with me will receive a report of all the students who've tested positive for COVID. Um, we will identify students who live in residence halls and we will contact them immediately for three um, main reasons. First of all, we wanna make sure that like your living situation is safe. Um, uh, and effective for you to to isolate in. And um, 
see if you need to relocate so that you can more effectively isolate. So if you're in a suite style room um, and you share a bathroom with someone and you test positive, we'll wanna move so that you're in a space where there's uh, not the risk to um, transmit the virus to a suite mate. We also wanna make sure that we coordinate meal delivery so that through the duration of your isolation, we're able to get food delivered to you, um, whether you're staying in your space or relocating temporarily for your isolation. And then we'll also start by initiating contact tracing. So I wanted to talk a little bit about contact tracing because it's probably one of the most important things about um, living in the halls next semester um, and keeping uh, the community safe and mitigating the spread of the virus because that's the goal of contact tracing, mitigating the risk of transmission of the virus as much as possible. And that's gonna be more important than ever with our increased campus presence next semester. So I wanted to briefly go through what it looks, what the contact tracing process looks like, so that if you find yourself uh, involved in that contact tracing process, whether as um, a positive case or as a contact of someone, you know what it looks like, and it's not as much of a surprise for you when it happens. Um, so we will receive a report of a positive case, and when that happens, um, we assign that case to a contact tracing volunteer, and we're going to have over 70 contact tracing volunteers next semester who will be. Um, ready and able to reach out to everybody to conduct contact tracing. So during this case investigation, the contact tracer um, asks uh, the student who has tested positive about their symptoms, when they started, if they're having symptoms at all, and then they gather a list of people that they have been in contact with during their infectious period. Those people um, are then notified through email that they are a contact of a positive case and that they should begin quarantining. Um, and if that is you and if you live in a residence hall and you're a contact, you'll also receive a phone call from either me or my colleagues, um, one of the COVID care coordinators. So we'll be calling you again for those reasons I mentioned above to um, check if you're able to uh, quarantine effectively in your space or if we need to re relocate you um, so that you can uh, coordinate in a space where you don't have a shared bathroom, um, quarantine in a space where you don't have a shared bathroom. Uh, and then we also wanna set up your meal delivery again um, because Throughout the semester, we will, if you're placed in exposure quarantine, um, we will make sure that meals are delivered to you in your space um, so that you can quarantine there without leaving your room. I wanted to note that all of our contact tracers, um, those 70 that I mentioned, those are um, staff members, some faculty members, graduate students in public health programs, and even some undergraduate students who all go through some extensive training um, before you all get to can campus um, about contact tracing and uh, about HIPAA. So all of our contact tracers are bound by HIPAA. And so when someone is notified um, that they are a contact, they're never shared, um, we never share the name of the person um, who has tested positive because that would be a violation of HIPAA. So what we're sharing with contacts when they are notified is that they were in contact with someone and the last state that they were in contact with them because that determines the quarantine period. And then also, um, and along with contact tracing, we uh, wanna emphasize the importance of answering your phones and checking your voicemails next semester. Um, Please, even if you don't recognize a number, just answer the phone. Worst case scenario, it's a telemarketer and you can hang up, but it may also be us or one of our contact tracers trying to reach you to let you know that you should be quarantining. Like I said, we have 70 of them and not all of them will be calling from a 773-508 number that you're used to seeing from Loyola. So it's super important to answer those calls. And if you're not able to, to check your voicemails and call back as quickly as you can um, so that we can, like I said before, do the best that we can to mitigate the risk of transmitting the virus in the halls. Um, lastly, I just really wanted to emphasize just how important it is to be open and honest throughout the contact tracing process. Um, we're not here to judge you. We're not here to get you in trouble for getting COVID or being exposed to COVID. We are simply doing the best that we can to gather information and keep the community safe. So a common theme of the day has been to be patient and to help us as much as possible and being open and honest throughout the contact tracing process um, will really help us in that area. Thank you. Thank you so Matt. Saying thank you so much, Matt. And I want to appreciate all the work that Matt and his team has to have done to help keep our students safe in the fall semester and all the work they will they will do to make sure that you all are continually safe and get the information that you need into the spring. 
Additionally, I just want to make sure people know that they can still ask questions in the Q&A feature. I think we're over 100 questions so far, so please feel free to keep asking them. I know that our folks are, are very diligently and quickly answering them as well. We'll make sure there's some time at the end, so that way those get answered before folks log off of the webinar. But um, we're going to move on, and I would like to now welcome Connie, Chamber, Connie Chambers and Sophia ba Bamiatis from Campus Dining for the next part of our webinar. Thank you, Ross, and, and welcome everybody. It's really, again, it's like I echo everybody's sentiment about how great it is to have everybody back. Um, but uh, as Russell said, I'm Connie Chambers. Um, I lead the team here at Loyola, Loyola Dining Team, and we have been very busy uh, making many changes to our services to ensure student safety, the student safety during both the moving quarantine and, and beyond. As mentioned, the moving quarantine service will begin on January the 13th, depending on your housing location, you will either receive a meal kit filled with, with, filled with meals and snacks for the quarantine duration. Those not receiving a meal kit will receive two deliveries per day in their res hall lobby. A food service staff will be found in appropriate PPE and will be, will be available to hand out and distribute your selection. Additionally, an ongoing quarantine and isolation service has been established to ensure students impacted by COVID-19 will, re will receive fresh and healthy meals in their res halls, quarantine locations, or iso isolation uh, rooms. We have set up an entire department working closely with the COVID care coordinators to identify when those services are needed and when those services need to end for a student. Students um, will place their orders to begin the service and we'll start immediately at our next delivery schedule. Safety is beyond critical to our operational planning. Staff receives daily wellness checks, kitchens, serving areas, dining rooms, and are cleaned and disinfected continuously throughout the day. Staff are provided ample PPE and operate within social distance guidelines in every aspect of the operation to ensure your safety and the safety of our staff. And now I'd like to turn it over to Sophia, who will tell you a little bit about what your dining experience will be this semester. Sophia? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Connie. I'd like to go ahead and get started with our meal plan. So if you are living on campus, you will be on our weekly 21 meal plan. What that includes is 21 meals per week plus three late night visits. Now your meal plan is just for you, so you can share it with your friends. And additionally, any meals that you don't use for the week will not roll over to the next week, meaning it's sort of a lose them or excuse me, use them or lose them type of scenario. So again, 21 meals per week plus three late night visits. Okay, so you have your meal plan. You might be wondering, where can I use my meal plan? Great question. This spring, we will have two dining locations open, Damon Dining Hall and Denobly Dining Hall. Damon is located on the north side of campus and Denobly is located on the south side of campus. Now you can go to either dining hall. You're not locked into one. So feel free to visit one, the other, or both. If you're an early bird, you're really going to like Damon because Damon is where you're going to find breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you're a night owl, Denobly is a place for you because Denobly will be serving lunch, dinner, and late night from Tuesday through Thursday. So Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, you can get your late night bites at Denobly. Now, of course, we believe food should be delicious, nutritious, and fun. So keep an eye out for our programming. We're going to be having theme meals, chef specials, celebrating national food holidays all semester long. So we want to make sure that everyone comes in and has a delicious and enjoyable experience. There's a really important resource that we'd like to tell you all about, and that's our Campus Dish website located at luc.campusdish.com. On that website, you'll be able to find a plethora of information. We'll have our menus, we'll have our hours, we'll have our contact information, we'll have our safety FAQs. If there's a change or an update on anything regarding to, to dining, that information will live on our website. So we encourage you to visit it and bookmark it. 
I know this team, of course, has been patients and everyone has been asked to bring their patients. Well, the dining team would also like to ask for everyone to bring your appetite. Your Loyola dining team can't wait to see you this spring. Thank you so much. Thank you, Connie and Sophia. I'm so glad that I had lunch before this because that made me extremely hungry. It's my favorite topic of the webinar. Um, but I want to make sure that we have a few moments to ensure that we've answered some of the questions that have come in both um, at your registration as well as the Q&A feature below. I think we're at 100, almost 130 questions answered on the Q&A feature. So thank you all for those people who are behind the scenes um, answering questions as well as your questions as well. Um, but I encourage you to keep using it, but we'll answer a couple questions live until we get to the end of um, our time today. The first question has been asked by many of our residents, um, and I want to bring in Yesenia to help me to answer this question. Yesenia, Deb talked briefly about the guest policies um, for the spring spring semester. Can you talk um, or can you define for us what constitute a guest in our residence halls and the kind of relevant policies for the upcoming year? Sure. So a guest is somebody that is not you that is not assigned to your space. Um, so during your move-in quarantine, it's absolutely nobody. It is your bubble. You are creating a Loyola bubble, if you will. Think of like the NBA, the WNBA bubbles, the bubble and the wobble. Yeah, you're going to do that. And then after the 14-day period, then your bubble just slowly expands. So maybe your next door neighbor and you hit it off with some of our amazing engagements on Zoom. Um, and then you, can, you all can, you know, practice social distancing, but your bubble expands a little bit. Then after 13 days, the university will reevaluate and then potentially you can invite folks that are not necessarily assigned to your hall. Um, so again, make sure that you start your bubble small. We get that done. We make sure that we don't extend it anywhere. Um, just to follow the rules, do what you got to do. And then slowly but surely we can expand our bubbles. Thanks, Yesenia. I really appreciate it. As Jennifer and Claire mentioned earlier, um, each resident has been assigned a move in time. Um, and I'm gonna bring in Jennifer for the next question um, because that's for you. Can a resident change their move-in date that's been on their email? Unfortunately, we are not able to change move-in uh, dates and times. Um, as I mentioned earlier in my, in my comments and my remarks, it's really imperative that we follow those move-in times uh, based on the availability of resources, um, on social distancing. We don't wanna necessarily overrun a particular move-in appointment window. So we really ask you to honor um, your assigned date and time. Thank you so much. As a little bit of a follow-up to that question, we always know that there's travel disruptions and delays. It's January in Chicago. Um, if some, if a resident has a change in their plans due to a travel disruption or a travel emergency, who should they contact and what process should they go through? Um, yes, January. That's that's going to be the fun part of this process. We're used to, you know, a typical move in in uh, the fall semester in August when the weather is much nicer. So yes, we do understand that there may be some uh, travel disruptions based on weather, or flight delay, etc. Um, we really encourage you to reach out to the Residence Life Office. You can contact us via email um, or um, you can leave a voicemail and someone will get back to you. Um, that person will probably talk to you about what your alternative options are if you're maybe arriving later in the evening because of a delay and what that check-in process would look like because of the delay. Um, so reach out to Residence Life if you experience a delay in getting to campus and we'll walk you through any adjustments to the check-in process. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I think it's a reminder just to pack your warm, your cold weather gear and the warmest parkas that you have, because um, we never know what, what, what winter might bring here at the beginning of January um, when you all return to us on campus. I'm going to bring in Deb for the next one. Um, we've received a few inqu inquiries about what family members should do if they're concerned about their student. Deb, do you want to provide um, the resources that might be available to family members who are worried about their students during this time? Absolutely, I'd be happy to. Um, as a parent myself, my students, my kids are out of college now, but I remember this being probably the most important question that I had uh, when my son was out of state uh, for college. So I absolutely get it as a parent. Um, really, campus safety is the 24 hours, seven day a week, 365 day a year contact for on campus. We do always have a residence life staff member, a full-time RD, 
that carries um, also a duty phone, but typically the primary outreach is campus safety. Depending on what the concern is, campus safety will send your um, email or send your voicemail to um, whoever needs to be contacted. They may reach out to us in Residence Life. They may reach out to campus um, ministry. There could be any number of places. So it's really important that if you're really concerned about your student to contact campus safety and they can be reached at 773-508-SAFE, S-A-F-E, which is 7233. 773-508-SAFE. 7233 is your best option if you have a concern. Thanks, Russell. That was a great question. Yeah, thanks, Deb. I, we really re appreciate and rely on our campus safety office to do a whole bunch of things, and they really are a great resource um, for any of those questions that you all may have. Um, the next one might be more of a self-serving question as someone in, who enjoys food. Um, but Sophia and Con Connie, you talked a little bit about the types of food that'd be available during moving quarantine and then the different kind of lunch, dinner, my favorite late night. Um, can you explain kind of some types of foods that students could expect during some of those times just so that we can get excited about what the dining halls have to offer? Sure, definitely. So David is going to be open for full service starting January 27th and Denoble is going to be open for full service starting on January 28th. We're going to have a variety of stations opened at both locations. We have options um, for vegans and vegetarians. We have if you like grill favorites, if you like pizza favorites, salads, um, if you have an allergen, we will look to accommodate you as well. So uh, when you're ready to eat, come on over, bring your ID, just show it to the cashier, and then you'll be welcome to come in. Now, please note, we will be doing social distance both within the queue to enter the dining hall as well as when you're in the servery, but it will be worth the wait because our chefs are firing up the grill, warming up the ovens, uh, planning a really great robust menu. And then don't forget, once that menu is done, it will live on our campus dish page. So check that out too. Thank you so much, Sophia. I need to go on to so a campus dish and uh, and see what's on there so I can plan my, my meals for the week. Um, <laughs> so my final question that I have um, that for right now um, is also food related. And I'm gonna bring in Yesenia again because we both love talking about food delivery. Um, with the availability of food delivery de um, apps like DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, et cetera, what tips and tricks do you have for students who would like to order food to their residence hall? Sure, great question. I've been practicing all semester for you all. I have it perfected. Um, first, uh, you need to know your address. Make sure that they go to the actual building. So if you don't know your address, your delivery, like Uber Eats specific address or whatever, make sure you um, Google like Fairfield Hall, Loyola, um, and then make sure you have that address stored, right? So then the next best friend that you have is a special instructions box in your food delivery app. Remember, this is straight to your door. This is not an Amazon situation. This is like Uber Eats, DoorDash, all that stuff. Special instructions box should say call and then insert your number and then say, I'll meet you at entrance. That might mean to them like the lobby, that mean, might mean the front gate. Make sure that you stay masked up, that you thank them, that you tip them well, because again, it is a pandemic and they are doing the Lord's work. Um, and then of course, um, make sure that you are tracking that, right? So make sure that you are on top of it and you plan enough time to get down there uh, because the front desk will not be allowed to hold any items for you. Um, so if it's your Portillo's waiting there, it's gonna stay waiting there with the DoorDash person until you come down and get it. Um, so stay, you know, stay alert on that. Now, the one caveat is, is that this cannot happen during, quarant uh, during exposure quarantine and during isolation. So move in quarantine for sure. Get your Chipotle on, get your, get your Portillo's. You gotta do, stay masked up, make sure that you're following all the rules so you continue to get all of the delectable things from Chicago. But if you are uh, under exposure quarantine, you're, you're contacted by you know, a contact a tracing lead. Um, and if you're required to isolate, then you should not be exposing, potentially exposing delivery drivers um, and essential workers uh, during that time. Thank you so much, Yesenia. I'm slowly becoming more hungry, even though I just ate lunch. Um, so those are all the questions um, that we wanted to answer today during the panel. Um, I want to take a brief moment to thank 
all of our panelists and our Q&A responders for making this webinar such a success. I don't know about you, but I'm getting really excited to see all of our new Ramblers on campus in the new year, 2021. Um, I encourage you to stay in touch with us through our Facebook and Instagram. Additionally, please email res-life at luc.edu if you have any questions about the information discussed this af afternoon. We will remain on the webinar for a few minutes. If you have some Q&A questions, feel free to throw them in the Q&A box. Um, and our Q&A responders are happy to help answer those um, through the remainder of the webinar as well. Please, please, please make sure you regularly check your email, read the COVID-19 and return to campus website, and most importantly, cheer on our ramblers. Thank you for attending, and we look forward to seeing you on campus. <laughs>